page 15, Oscar the Octopus. Here they're talking about sight reading. Sight reading is where you sit down at a piece you've never played and you just play it without any practicing or any, you're reading it at sight. It's, it's, when you read a book, you sight read all the time because it's not like, unless you've read the book before. But music, generally, we have to practice music to learn the piece. But sight reading can be a lot of fun. Now, sight reading is a skill. Reading music is a skill. It's like reading a book. It's a skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So sight reading is no different. Reading music in general is no different. And it's different for different people. Some people are really good at it. Some people are really very poor at it. I'm a fairly decent sight reader. There's others that are much better than me. But over the years I've had five concert pianist teachers from one time or another. And one of the teachers was a lady, she'd retired from concertizing because she was going to raise a family. But she was amazing. She could play just... She couldn't sight read. I couldn't believe it. She, in a lesson one day, she tried sight reading something for me, and she couldn't do it. She said, yeah, I've never been able to sight read at all. I just can't. But she can study the music and learn it and practice it and play it. The most difficult stuff, just amazing. So I was astounded. So you might be a good sight reader, you might not, but whether you are or not, you keep trying. But you need to have stuff you can sight read. It's like Oscar the Octopus, when you first open up and start doing it, you might try sight reading it straight through and see how well you do. Without any practicing or anything, you just sight read it. Generally, you'll, you'll look at the time signature so you know what you're dealing with. And you look at the key signature, which we haven't had yet. And then you try and play the notes. You might have to play it real slow. That's fine. You might not be able to take it up to speed yet. But the point is, you try and get as close as you can to the performance level. And that's it. That's sight reading. I don't really teach sight reading here, but that's something you can do on your own as you progress with your piano studies. Now here in Oscar the Octopus, this is in 3-4 time, so we only have to count to 3 this time, but we're still counting quarter notes. So if you look at each of these measures, you'll see 3 quarter notes or a dotted half note. Some of them got a dotted half note. Now, how does that work? I don't know. A half note is the same as two quarter notes. Well, the dot gets half the value of the note. That's a standard rule. And there's any, most any note can be dotted. So just remember that. The dot gets half the value of the note. We'll come back to that later. So if a half note gets two beats, then the dot gets one. It's the same as one quarter note. You put them together. Three quarter notes total. Now they give you a chart there in the, in the lower left corner there on the note table of the different notes. Keep in mind that when it says it gets one count, that's in 4-4 four, four, or 3-4 time. Because there's other time signatures and it may not get one count, it might be something else. But I can always say no matter what the time signature is that the half note is the same as two quarter notes. It's always the same as two quarter notes. The dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. And the whole note is the same as four quarter notes. See, everything's in relation to one another. Then you got to go back to this time signature and say, well, how much is a quarter note worth? And that tells you, and well, it's worth one count. But in that case, all the others are worth counts. Blah, 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 it's whatever it is. And that's the way it works. Across the board, that's the way it works. So I'd like to play this with you just to check your notes and your rhythms because now we're starting to get it all mixed up. The hands are just playing ever willy-nilly this way or that way. So where do the hands go? Well, I, you already know they're in middle C position, but let's just check. How do I know they're in middle C position? Because the notes and the finger numbers at the beginning tell me that. If I look at the first note, it's in the left hand, second finger on B here. Well, if I do that, then the other fingers go there. That's the left hand. It's called an F position, by the way, because the bottom note in it is an F. Then I go to the next note. It's in the right hand. It's a thumb on middle C here. So if I put the other fingers there, 
then the right, that's called a C position for the right hand because it's here. But when I put both hands up here and I see both thumbs on middle C, that's middle C position. Well, that's what it is. That's how I know what it is. Yeah. So I'm going to give us three counts since there's only three beats in a measure. I'm just going to go one ready go and we go. Let's play it together slowly and double check your notes and your rhythms. Counting wise, when you're first starting to learn it, you got to count it out very carefully. But once you get the rhythm, once you know the counts, you don't have to count it anymore. You can feel it because you've got it. So here we go. One, ready, go.